Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about a very important statement given by none other than the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Shabazz Sharif. In replying uh, to a letter which was sent by uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, uh, where he said that uh, we congratulate the incoming Prime Minister and Modi also mentioned that now it is high time to improve the relationship and also Pakistan should look after the issues of terrorism. Now, in reply, uh, the Prime Minister made sure that uh, linking security to economic uh, prosperity as a response to Modi's message, he said, you know, we should look after uh, the prosperity and the betterment of our own uh, people. Let's lift their living standards and this is what is more important in South Asia. But having said that, in the previous comment of uh, the former Prime Minister Imran Khan, what we witnessed was that uh, the relationship uh, between Pakistan and India was at its lowest level. So was the case with the Americans. Now, it is generally believed that the relationship between these two countries, uh, when we talk about Pakistan and India in particular, will improve. As we all know that uh, Mohammed Nawaz Sharif, the former Prime Minister, also had very close relationship with the with the Indian government and Modi Sahib also came to Pakistan to attend the wedding of the former Prime Minister's granddaughter. So, if the direction is right and appropriate measures are taken, yes, for sure, uh, the relationship and the understanding uh, perhaps can improve and the trust deficit that is almost skyrocketing uh, will also uh, come uh, to a slightly lower level and that is what uh, is important. You just can't expect everything to turn around with a matter, within a matter of days. It, it doesn't happen that way. It has never happened that way in the past also. Now, uh, when we talk about the Pakistan-India ties, what sort of challenges are there? What sort of opportunities are there? There's a certain school of thought that believes that uh, Pakistan should start doing trade with India and there is a lot of potential. Despite the fact that the Indians and the Chinese, they have their own issues related to border or otherwise, but when you look at their trade, and especially when I'm talking about the bilateral trade, it's unbelievable. It's touching around $100 billion, whereas when it comes to Pakistan and China, it is hardly 17 out of which around 14 plus billion dollars of imports are included. So we have to understand that certain areas really need to be focused. And uh, perhaps that is where uh, the truth is, that is where uh, the reality lies, that is where we can do a lot of improvement and that is the exact area that is going to benefit the people of not only Pakistan but also India. But at the same time, since there is an extremist government in India of Hindutva, that is of prime concern. The atrocities committed by the Indian forces against not only the Muslims living in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir but all around India, whether you talk about Karnataka where his job has been banned or you talk about certain other uh, eastern uh, states or you talk about even states like UP where there are a lot of problems for the Muslims. So this is what we'll be uh, talking about in our today's uh, program. But before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that first. India has always been a major challenge in Pakistan's foreign policy imperatives. However, since Narendra Modi has taken the office of Prime Minister of India and inducted extremist and Hindutva-oriented policies in its national and foreign policy domains, maintenance of peaceful and constructive relations with India become more daunting for Pakistan. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif led new government in Pakistan also inherited such challenges in their foreign policy objectives. Shehbaz Sharif, after his election as the Prime Minister of Pakistan, has already pledged to manage the damage control which the previous government has inflicted in the foreign policy domains. In this regard, according to media sources, the Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif penned a letter to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi calling on him to resolve the Jammu and Kashmir dispute in the interest of mutual peace and prosperity for India and Pakistan. In this letter, he showed the desire of peaceful and cooperative ties between Pakistan and India to enhance the progress and socio-economic conditions of people of both countries as well as for the stability of the region. Earlier, Narendra Modi had congratulated Shehbaz Sharif on his election as the Prime Minister and said that India desired peace and stability in the region. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif reciprocated the gesture and said Pakistan also desire peaceful and cooperative ties with India for which a solution to Kashmir dispute is indispensable. Now to talk about this we have with us on Skype Brigadier Retired Haris Nawaz Senior Analyst 
and we also have thus uh, Shahid M G Kiani Sa, former ambassador, senior diplomat, gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for joining us in our program. Now let me let me start off uh, uh, from Brigadier Haris Nawaz Sa. Obviously, what we have witnessed in the past that uh, whenever Mia Muhammad Nawaz Sharif Sa was in power and he's been the Prime Minister three times, the relationship between Pakistan and India wasn't that great, but at least wasn't touching uh, the bottom either. Uh, things were pretty okay. A lot of hue and cry regarding the uh, beginning of the trade with the Indians, but it could not happen. Now, do you believe, sir, that as they call it the economic diplomacy these days, uh, trade will improve the relationship and that trust deficit that exists there uh, will also sort of uh, go down and last but not the least whatever is happening uh, in Pakistan uh, by using the soil of Afghanistan we all know who is behind uh, those uh, uh, particular attacks on our uh, soldiers and even on the softer targets but having said that uh, when Modi talks about uh, looking after the terrorism activities I think he also needs to look inwards also that who is causing the trouble in South Asia which country is uh, behind uh, terrorism, which country is supporting and financing the terrorists and the non-state actors to make sure that Pakistan remains destabilized. Obviously, Pakistan can't do it uh, to, to itself, all this damage, but obviously we do understand that India is behind that. We have presented so many dossiers and we have presented a very clean case in the UN and also at uh, other platforms. Regina Saab, your take, sir. You see that the point is, uh, we do hope that the situation is going to improve. With the uh, Prime Minister Shabashri becoming the Prime Minister, sending a very complimentary letter to him and responding to their letter. But the point is, this is about three years back, the, all the situation got deteriorated. When Indian revoked 370 and 75A and, and really forcefully occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Now that was the basic issue why our last government relations went down and they were really on the low app and then of course pakistan did not compromise they took the issue of the united nations also uh, there there was a big speech from ex prime minister pakistan so the it depends now how india behaves again shabashri will written a letter complimentary letter gi to agree but then when indian wrote a letter they always again mentioned that terrorism is the main issue not realizing what india is doing it and this is what is very irritating for pakistan Pakistanis and government of Pakistan, how to improve and how to take a step forward. Because when you are doing terrorism in Pakistan, what you're doing through raw in through Afghanistan to Balochistan, we know how many people are forces, people have been shaheed. These are things which are further deteriorating the condition. Then what are you doing in Kashmir? How are you killing innocent Kashmiri young people? Then of course ladies, the old men, they are they have no value for human life. That's the problem. So India must realize Pakistan is a victim of terrorism. We are not doing anything. We can't afford to have a cross-border terrorism because now Pakistan is already faced with a lot of internal problems. We are fighting terrorism in Pakistan. We are having an internal security problem. Then we have a problem in Balochistan. Our troops are really mired in all these conditions. And this is the problem Pakistan is facing. So India must realize can India give some space to Shabazz Sharif to improve relations? And that is what the Pakistan has asked also, that core issue of Kashmir must be resolved before we improve our relationship. And that is very important because the previous government had taken a very strong stance to negotiate with India only when India revokes the 70 and 30, 35A. Then our ex-National Security Advisor has said many times, that okay, we are there to improve relations. We want a bilateral relation. We want economic, economically improving relations. We want trade with bilateral trade with India. But the issue is the core issue of Kashmir, and they are not pushed about it. And again, they are again they are blaming Pakistan that we are doing terrorism, and it can be improved only when we go and stop terrorism. Again, I think they talked about Pathan Court and then Bombay incident. All these things have to be left now forward. Move. We must uh, keep moving forward and for that india will have to show some constructive improvement in relation in kashmir either they accept bilateral okay we should and we talk it out with the core issue of kashmir or the way indian nation revolution is there but pakistan if no present government start negotiating in india without resolving kashmir issue or 
core issue question or the indian expect that it's it will dispute even now they say there is no dispute also then it will have a backlash in pakistan so in that context i say that india has to take a step forward then pakistan definitely take two steps we don't mind but there should be some relaxation stop violence in kashmir number one then show what all you have done it you have to revoke take it back then pakistan government no problem pakistan want relationship but then india should also stop to interfere in pakistan that should be clear matching going to india that please stop interfering in pakistan for example if gulbachan yadav then is the lahore incident then but british why pakistan. should they stop they have invested billions of dollars they have trained so many people to make sure that whatever design they had in their mind that should be achieved that should be taken care of and why should they back out obviously sir so this, this is, is their uh, long term investment so this is the problem then how do we improve the relation what they are doing in balochistan and that example is very clear they are creating trouble in balochistan because they don't want the cpec should be operationalized now and our utmost desire even last government present government is that we have to complete cpec because we are an islamic country we are a nuclear country and mm -hmm. if we economically prosper through cpec we will take this in in our national interest we will be out of imf world bank we will have economic prosperity and that is what is the aim of any government coming to pakistan so i think that everything revolves around that that how india behave how india stopped doing terrorism in pakistan pakistan cannot do terrorism see it is 100% fencing all around the interest border and on line of control so there is no question of intrusion from pakistan side these are things which and then they have that generated on at night and you can pin point even a coin from distance of 100 to 200 meter both are the issues we talking about it so india must realize and then they are very vocal about it that kashmir is their part they will not discuss anything if they have this stance very hard stance then i don't think i feel any progress coming in a near future particularly with this government which is a very short time maybe all right six months one year that but all right brigesh i'll just get back to you let me also include uh, uh, kyani saab uh, in the conversation now kyani saab you have been an ambassador for a very long time you have served in the foreign office you understand how diplomacy works now sir let's suppose because this is what we've been hearing that let's suppose mr blavat bhutto from pakistan people's party is the chairman uh, he is the future uh, foreign minister a young man a dynamic man but yet uh, not that kind of an experience of handling the uh, foreign policy and we do understand the kind of uh, decisions at times you have to take and they're not favorable but sir one slogan that we used to hear very often and that used to be modi ka jo yaar hai gaddar hai gaddar hai so whosoever is a friend of modi is a traitor now the point is that if you have been uh, you know recognized as somebody who has invented this particular slogan <coughs> sir but what when you become the uh, foreign minister how would you engage the indians after this number one and secondly uh, what sort of challenges do you think uh lavel bhutto saab is going to face in this particular regard kyani saab the thing is first of all uh the uh, lavel bhutto's interviews if you if you just go back maybe few months uh you um, you can watch the in the manner in the, the extremely confident extremely matured uh, responses he gave to various interviews which he has given the last few months is a young man educated and uh, full of life somebody who has a you know look at his pedigree the his mother and then his grandfather all of them engaged with india you see sometimes people do in public meetings give such uh, slogans but they are they are quickly forgotten now the problem is why you should rather we should welcome mr belawal bhutto to head the, the foreign ministry young man dynamic man and if you look at the foreign office uh, officers more or less they are young so they will be you know uh, they, they will be able to 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 you know and, and kyani saab most likely hina rabani khar the former foreign minister yeah. Uh, yeah. is going to be the minister of state for foreign affairs yeah. so do you think that particular equation is going to suit well for pakistan a a absolutely because ms hina uh, rabani khar is another dynamic lady who uh, stayed pakistan foreign policy during a very difficult period now you see why uh, what i'm saying is now the the prime minister uh, 
Mr. Shabash has already written to the Indian Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And why? Meaning, if you try to see their the record, his record and his brother's record, all of the People's Party record, is far is relatively better than the one with the previous government. There's no criticism of it. You see why why the why do they write letters? Why do they do this? Because geographical compulsions and challenges of coexistence. Geography, you cannot take away India, Pakistan away. They are they have a huge border. Then if you have a huge border and you have problems and the challenges of coexistence, you have to coexist. You just gave an excellent example of China and India. They fought a war and then one and a half year back, the in the in the Doklam. Uh, uh, and, and they had a very, very serious skirmish in which they lost the soldiers and Indians were pushed um, back. But this is very interesting. Suddenly, as these skirmishes are also taking place, they are engaging each other at the level, political level and the military level. And they were able to contain the, uh, the, 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 what you call the skirmish which has taken place. And at the same time, they did not miss that the larger picture was the trade continued and it, it, the trade has not stopped. Even though the problems of the border demarcation still and Ladakh and you see what the Indians did was, and I'm being very honest with you, a very foolish mistake they made. While while making Ladakh and Indian occupied Kashmir two different provinces under the under the Indian central government, they didn't realize that Ladakh is a controversial subject between India and, and China. So Correct. They, they made a mistake. They made they just took, took into account Pakistan, but they didn't take take into account China. Now the the thing is, the Prime Minister has written our Prime Minister written directly to India, very right. And you know what? Why? Now what is going to happen is I've been saying on this channel for a long time, the first thing we need to do is raise the diplomatic level. Let the high commissioners of India and Pakistan be sent to each other's capitals. Why? Because to follow up on these letters, and, and this is not going to end, there will be messages and messages will be sent to, to, uh, to each other. It has to be sent at the highest level. And the highest level means the, the high commission. I tell you, both the countries would welcome it. The other second thing is, you see, look at what's happening in the Indian occupied Kashmir. What's happening to the Muslims in India? They, these, their interests can only be protected if both the governments are talking to each other not otherwise. Nobody's going to compromise on the issue of Kashmir. Very right, our Prime Minister didn't them, but only through a dialogue. Because geographical compulsions, they necessitate challenges of coexistence. You have to coexist, you have to talk to each other. If China and India can talk, why not us? But you see, there's another thing that India desires to respect in the neighborhood. It has to spurn its yearning to dominate the neighborhood and instead embrace the true spirit of coexistence, respecting the sovereignty of the country. Unfortunately, India in its neighborhood is not on good terms with, with any country, barring aside maybe a little bit with Bangladesh. But other countries, they have been browbeating these countries, just like the uh, uh, like a, like a colonial power. So this is Sir, something. That this is perhaps to, what we believe respond. that they do not have that kind of a great relationship, sir. But look at Sri Lanka, almost yeah. at a verge of economic collapse. Look at the forex reserves they have. They they are in dire straits. Two countries they're looking forward to. One is China and the other is India. So, sir, if that is the kind of situation between India and Sri Lanka from our perspective, from our prism, reality yeah. is different, isn't it, sir? Don't you think this is high time that we should also recognize and understand that whatever is in our mind or is in our heart and whatever we say perhaps is not 100% correct because we believe India is like, you know, let's not assume your enemy is weak. It's, 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 its economy is larger than that of Russia. India yeah, has yeah, got yeah. a huge force, sir. India has got uh, multiple long-term objectives. They want to rule and only the country which wants to rule has to have certain ingredients. Do you think those sure. ingredients are missing? Or perhaps a country like Sri Lanka cannot be handled by India, which is the immediate neighbor, sir? Yeah, Janisha? I agree with you. You see, you see, what has happened is, even Sri Lanka has been in, you know, by its own, uh, meaning what I'm reading in the media is that certain policies and plus certain issues of corruption brought their economy down. And then the COVID, yes, because it runs on tourism. And India was waiting for this fruit to fall into their lap. And India, uh, India's, uh, you know, uh, has been breathing down Sri Lanka's 
Nec and Nepal's and Bhutan's and other for the last many years. But this is a time in which it has reached out to to Sri Lanka. Even though I, I don't think Sri Lankan would like to engage with India on this issue, and they would like rather have China as a partner. But unfortunately, these things are not happened. But what happens is because I think Sri Lankans also understand the geographical compulsions, and it has been a victim of a very long civil war. I don't want it doesn't want to repeat it again because India was involved. you know in in this war for a very long time and only in the last few years was it able to you know this but sir bygones are bygones and they have moved forward just like narendra modi when he went to bangladesh in the dhaka university he said that he was a part of rss he was a part uh, of uh, uh, that particular group uh, that was responsible uh, for breaking away of uh, bangladesh or east pakistan as it used to be in those days so we are even still writing letters to him exchanging letters and we are still talking about mm -hmm. peace with him so if that is the case i hope india can definitely look after the affairs of sri lanka uh, sir i'll i'll get back to you we've been joined in by uh, shokat paracha saab senior journalist yeah. senior anchor person in our studio prasad thank you so much for your time so talking about the india pakistan relationship especially once this government uh, is in place is a coalition government uh, other than pti all the parties are together perhaps very much on the same Uh, uh platform i would say when it comes to the foreign policy bilawal bhutto most likely is going to be your or our uh, future foreign minister along with hina rabani khair who happens to be the former foreign minister so it's a good equation male and a female both educated well spoken uh, both from uh, good political families now sir do you think this particular move uh, by the government of pakistan by mr shahbaz sharif obviously uh, in consultation with mr zardari and other senior uh, political Uh, figures also can improve the relationship between pakistan and india and what sort of challenges and opportunities do you see sir thank you very much since i am late i don't know what has already been spoken about exactly a similar so, question and so um, i mean if there is repetition then i'll please go ahead your pardon. go ahead no problem but obviously there is a change in the government and uh, uh, there is a change in the mood as well change in the mood explain yeah. that yeah because because uh, prime minister of india narendra modi uh, was not responding to anything from prime minister former prime minister imran khan or pti government but this time even you know on the 14th of august last year it's a customary to exchange greetings that our head of state or head of government they used to write a letter to the indian counterparts on 15th of august and they used to write letters to to our head of state or government on 14th mm. of august but last 14th of august we never saw any exchange of these letters so it was an exception one uh, but now as the prime minister shahbaz sharif assumed the charge there was a letter a goodwill gesture goodwill letter whatever you know the critics say but a change of mood and similarly mm -hmm. prime minister of pakistan he also wrote a letter now when you talk about hopes uh, you know uh, many times uh, there were hopes you know when general pravez musharraf went to agra there were hopes you oh, know oh yes when kusuri sahab was the agra foreign summit, minister agra summit you know yeah. uh, could not succeed because of the rigid attitude by the then bjp leaders over there especially lk advani exactly but same lk advani came to pakistan in 2004 5 6 you see but then general pravez musharraf initiated a dialogue composite dialogue which continued for four years and i tell you a lot of progress was made a lot of progress in touching the basic issues including the core issue of kashmir that was also touched but later on then you know this composite dialogue could not move forward the way it was initiated in 2004 by by 6 january 2004 joint statement between uh, the then prime minister of india atal bihari bajpai and general pravez musharraf now prime minister shahbaz sharif has written a letter he has touched basically two things the mm -hmm. one is uh, when modi uh, ji he uh, congratulated shahbaz sharif the prime minister of pakistan he talked about uh, an atmosphere free of terror you know so Mia Shahbaz Sharif, in his letter, he had he had made it very clear that the Pakistan's contribution in fighting and eliminating terrorism, these efforts are 
globally acknowledged and there is no doubt they, that whosoever comes to Pakistan they they acknowledge that Pakistan has contributed mm -hmm. and even if nobody acknowledges we know you know and two very honorable guests sitting in your panel they all know how how much sacrifices we have the Pakistani nation has done and how much sacrifices we are still you know uh, paying in terms of everyday martyrdoms of uh, our officers, soldiers, civilians. That's correct. Second thing that the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mia Shahbaz Sharif, has, uh, has written a very categorical, you know, statement on Kashmir mm -hmm. that the resolution of uh, all outstanding issues, including the issue of Jammu and Kashmir, that is fundamental for cooperative relations in the region. So. What I want to say is that it's only a change of mood. There is nothing substantial. Indian Prime Minister, he has talked that what they have been talking, you know, for the last 20 years, that uh, an atmosphere free of terror. And Pakistani Prime Minister has talked, but we are genuinely, we believe that the, the Kashmir issue must be resolved for a normal... Now, now Piraja Saab, uh, uh, our foreign uh, uh, former... Uh, High Commissioner to India, Dr. Abdul Basit Saab. Basit in fact, one of uh, his vlog was uh, uploaded, I think, a day or a day before, in, or rather, uh, yesterday. And he mentioned that this letter written by the Prime Minister of Pakistan, obviously, he doesn't write it himself, there's a consultation. Yeah, yeah, obviously. This could have been a little more tough. He said that that was too lenient. The reply should have been a little stiff because. Narendra Modi, in fact, mentioned about terrorism and everything. How do you how do you see that, and how would you respond to it? I respond to you, it basically. I told you that I have seen many ups and downs in this relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, if I believe in former Foreign Minister uh, Mia Khurshid Mahmood Kasuri, and I believe that uh, he is right, what he wrote in his book, book yeah. that Pakistan and India, they almost were ready to sign an agreement on the issue of Kashmir. So, if you are tough or you are lenient, lenient it mean, lenient mean that you are on the verge of an agreement. Mm -hmm. And that agreement would have been on the basis of four point formula put forward mm -hmm. by General Praveed Musharraf. That agreement, I, I presume that it was not on the basis of the UN Security Council resolution, you know. So, four point formula that was presented, discussed and thoroughly threadbare, you know, uh, an analyzed in Pakistan and India, you know, Karan Thapar's interview, I remember where General Praveen Musharraf put forward this formula. So, if we were lenient or India was lenient or the, or the two countries, they were giving a way to peace, you know. I have also seen and I have also seen in the aftermath of Mumbai attacks or other you know uh, when when Modi ji came to Pakistan on 125th December the hawk statements here you know I have also seen that these these statement to someone could be little linear and for others could be very tough okay. but but the principle of of Pakistan that the resolution of Kashmir is a must and that too on the basis of resolution of Security Council that is mentioned in, 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 in the letter of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. Similarly, when mm, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has talked about uh, uh, this issue of terrorism, uh, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has also reminded rather Indian Prime Minister Modi that look, you know, the world is acknowledging the, the only country that is hoodwinking its own population, its own people, uh, the only country in the neighborhood which cannot see so many Pakistanis, you know, being uh, killed, you know, in the, in the uh, waves of terrorism, that is India. So, Prime Minister of Pakistan has also reminded Narendra Modi that, look, you know, I mean, writing to a Prime Minister and uh, talking about the fundamentals when, when we say that the Kashmir... It carries a lot of value. Uh, when we say, or, or Prime Minister of Pakistan mm. says, that Kashmir is a pending dispute, it means mm. he is also negating the, the initiatives taken by India on 5th of August 20, 2019. You see, it's a comprehensive uh, thing that has been put in, in the letter, but one can see in any way, you know. Now, coming back to you, uh, Brigadier Harris, uh, you heard what uh, Piraja Sab just said. Every country wants to have a better relationship with its neighbors. 
Sir, unfortunately, when it comes to Pakistan, we have got India on one side, Iran on one, Afghanistan sharing the major border with Pakistan, then we have got China, and that is linked through the KKH. Now, sir, the best way forward, as they say, that uh, collective approach, that's how regions grow. When regions grow, individual countries grow as well. So over here, because of the COVID during the last two and a half years, people have suffered, the entire globe has suffered. But now, generally, it is believed that there is a change in government. Uh, Mia Shabazz Sharif has known uh, for his great administrative skills. And this is what we have witnessed during the first two, three days, that he gets up at 7 in the morning, he's out, mm -hmm. and he's looking after the affairs. But what I'm saying is this, uh, when it comes to the foreign policy, it is not only the government. There are a couple of other institutions involved in uh, decision-making, especially when it comes to India. Now, sir, do you believe that all these institutions, along with the current government, uh, or collision government, as they say, uh, they'll be able to generate that kind of results, number one. And secondly, sir, being on the same page, I think that holds the key. Let's throw light on that aspect. You see, the most important thing is that India has to change its approach. The problem is India wants a hegemonic designs in this region, and they consider Pakistan as a stumbling block. And then we see the relationship within the neighborhood. Sir, if you and could India speak a little been... louder, sir, please. Thank okay. you. You see, the problem is India has hegemonic design in this uh, region, and Pakistan remains a stumbling block. If we see in neighborhood, all the, the neighbor, neighborhood countries, they are not happy with India. Uh, production, can you kindly can raise I... the volume, please? Thank you. Please, raise some more. I have the full volume. I have the full volume. I don't know. Can you hear me now? No, sir. I'm trying to, sir. Thank you. Yeah, better, okay. sir. Thank you. The problem is, I've, I've said that India has hegemonic design, Pakistan is in the stumbling block. That is why they have, we have the same relationship. And all the neighboring countries, they are, don't have a relationship with India. We know it even. Bangladesh is not happy on these issues. The problem is, that we understand the present government uh, in, intends having a better relationship with India. But the problem is, Indian, they, do, they are not pushed about it. They are pushed only about their own affairs, what they are doing with Kashmir. They want to completely have a control in Kashmir. They say it's a part of Kashmir. Then, of course, uh, they are doing terrorism in Pakistan. They are not pushed about it. And that's where they mention again, free of terrorism. Means who is doing terrorism? Pakistan remains the victim of terrorism. We have lost 80,000 civilians. We have lost around 8,000 uh, troops. And then, of course, $150 billion economic losses. Nobody realizes that. And again, you see what is happening towards the TPP. Who is funding it? Who is giving all the weapon ammunition? And they are creating a lot of problems. Pakistan, every day, our troops are being shaheeds. So those are the things you have to create conducive environments to sit across the table. Then, of course, Pakistan has taken a principal stand. Then India has to show improvement in Kashmir, whether it is the revocation of 370 or 35A, then how they do democratic changes in, in, in in Kashmir, what are how they are killing young youth? It's a mass genocide of Kashmiri people. So these are the irritants. At least you need to remove certain irritants before we go for trade. And that is what it, because India is a big country, everybody wants a relationship with them because of the trade relationship. They have a lot of in American interest. They have Quad Group. Then they want to have CPEC. Again, CPEC they want to use India. So these are the issues Pakistan want and any government. We sit with them and without seeing any progress on these issues, I think it will have a backlash. And particularly the present government, they have a very short time for them. They have to go for general election, maybe one year, max one year, I would say. So they have they and they are mired with so many other internal problems. There are economic problems, you have the price hike, inflation, group of lot of population government is there, they will have their own problem. So when you see all this under the canvas, that means that India has to show some positive response before Pakistan looking for, start looking for Indian and we sit for negotiation. That is very, very important. Otherwise, if any government, even present government, they start, they want to have a relationship with India without seeing any response in Kashmir, I think it will have a backlash. This is my observation. And this needs to be done before India start doing some positive things and then Pakistan give a positive response. Now, Brigitte, one quick comment. Uh, uh, 
because in the past what we witnessed is that whenever Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz is in power, things do get to improve uh, between Pakistan and India. But if you take a very stiff stance like the previous government in fact had one, uh, then there is no moving forward. Now in this particular case, sir, let's keep Kashmir issue aside is for a I second. Think? Aside for a second, sir, there are so many other issues you regarding see, water, regarding uh, Sir Creek for that matter, uh, uh, LOC perhaps is another problem. Uh, then you talk about the trade, terrorism coming in uh, from the uh, neighboring borders into Pakistan. One important factor, sir, that was about Kulbushan Yadev. I remember Mia Mohammad Nawashti was always blamed that he never took the name of Kulbushan Yadev, whereas the previous government, in fact, presented so many dossiers. And uh, we got to know that. Uh, uh, Whenever the former prime minister would be addressing any gathering, he would talk about uh, the Indian atrocities in Kashmir or the Indian wrongdoings, I would say, uh, or the act of terrorism that was supported uh, by the Indians as well. But do you think this particular government is going to be that vocal or uh, perhaps uh, they would uh, prefer no, to improve the ties with India and would prefer not to highlight certain issues? You see, the Indian the Pakistan government will be definite they want a better relationship with the Indian president government. And they will not raise in you know, a very top, top of the voice all these issues. But the core issues like CHN problem, Sir Creek problem, water terrorism, we have a big problem in Pakistan. I mean, they are concerned with really a lot of dams and they are diverting the water for which Pakistan is guaranteed the water. So these are, the, and of course, Kashmir remain the core issue. India has to show some positive steps. You see, otherwise, the present government will have a backlash from the people of Pakistan. They have not liked it, and they feel that the, this present government will improve relations with India. There is no harm. They are the neighbors. We need to develop relations with them. But the issue remains that how India responds. Immediately, they have shown again that Pakistan is involved in terrorism. It is fact the fact that what they are doing it. It is known internationally fact that what Bhushan Yadav was doing what India doing with the Blochistan openly by the all leaders, even that is the problem that are coming. So these are the things we need to immediately address them. Or Pakistan must convey to back channel, whatever it is, that show some space to Pakistan respond. That is all right. important, I would say. If that is done, we love. All right. See. Now, coming back to you, uh, uh, Kiani Saab. Uh, now, yeah. obviously, there is a diplomatic norm, there is a way forward. But looking at the current scenario, sir, this is year 2022. You're talking about uh, the month of April. Let's assume the government is there in power till the next elections on time. But having said that, one important factor is which is also much appreciated. Uh, by the majority is whenever there is a stiff decision taken by the government of Pakistan regarding India. Over here, sir, uh, perhaps a lot of relaxation could be given. We might hear about, uh, you know, resuming of trade. Uh, we might hear about the bus service getting improved or perhaps uh, the rail service uh, taken care of. These are the basic steps you need to undertake, sir in order to improve the relationship. You can't take a decision regarding Kashmir on the very first day. Obviously, that is very much understood. So what sort of measures do we expect to be taken from the Indian side? And how do we reciprocate, sir? The thing is, first of all, let me give my own opinion regarding sending a tough letter. Letters are, in the passage of time, will be buried in the, in the, in the books of history. Nobody's going to look at it. The most important thing is, the dialogue which is going to take place between the two political leaderships of India and Pakistan. It is not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. But I tell you, even the these messages which have been exchanged, these are the messages on which the relationship now will be rebuilt. First of all, as I said to you, would be raising the level of uh, diplomatic relations. And now they've been downgraded for the last two years. Now you have to raise them. And you will see sooner than later this thing. The other thing is that I see in all this, uh, you know, uh, problems, the story of Pakistan and India being at loggerheads. The three three uh, developments were taking place in which I think a possible data in the relationship. One was the DGMOs 
announcement of February 2021 to, to, to a recommitment to the original ceasefire accord of 2003. So that one is has, has been able to, to, by and large, a peaceful LOC. Then was the Qatar corridor, which opened in 2019, allows Indian devotees to visit Qatar because that is people to people contact. Trade and people to people contact are, are the building blocks on which the relationship will survive. Look at, as I you said, China, India. Why are they not trying to, you see, uh, why has not the relationship, you know, been downgraded? They have not downgraded the relationship even after having fought this, this skirmish. The third thing is, in a rare instance of cooperation, tense relationship with Pakistan, Pakistan allowed the 2,500 uh, meter tons of heat to be to be brought by, by road from it into Afghanistan. So these are things which are building blocks of a data between Pakistan and India. We need to look forward to it. Nobody's, nobody, no government worth its salt is going to compromise on the issue of Kashmir. It's a core issue. But how do you, how do you do it? Not on day one. They know it. And even, even Indians are in a bind as far as the Indian occupied Kashmir is concerned. Things are not, not okay there. So they would like to have a dialogue. You cannot have a, a very large ego. You can't do that. Both the countries will have to sit across the table. There will be a lot of homework to be done by professional diplomats. So will have to India is great, but will they? That's the thing. Sir? So I'm saying they will have to sounds great, but will they do it? I, I tell you, these are signs, even in the most difficult period of Pakistan-India history, history, when Musharraf was there and then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif was there, and even, even look at Prime Minister Imran Khan. when Musharraf was there, the Pakistan Karthar, was enjoying in, 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 in a different status. We were the first, uh, you know, the country to be recognized as a non-NATO ally. We were a part of that war. Dollars were pouring in. We had a great relationship with the Americans. Obviously, the Americans needed us for the next 20 years or perhaps more. That was another reason that uh, the government of uh, BJP at that time, they had to, you know, consider us important. Now, in these given circumstances, sir, when the economic performance is right in front of you, post-COVID era is not that great, perhaps. Uh, do you think that we still have the same weightage which we used to enjoy then when Musharraf was in power? And can we talk to them in the same tone, same volume, and at the same level, sir? The thing is, India is uh, abhors these uh, inter, uh, third party mediation between Pakistan and India. Well, to be honest, behind the scenes, even Russia, China, the United States have been able to talk to India and Pakistan. And they, uh, China has always been, been encouraging us that we should talk to India. Not on any, you know, terms, you know, open discussion. My my take on this is, thing is that this is a good beginning. I'm not saying that overnight India's ideology would change, the Hindu Hindu ideology would change. Not the least, yes, United States as considers India to be a partner in trying to contain China. They are not going to succeed because you have seen what has happened in the last two years. But rather, it was India which was taken to the wall by China. But the, but the fact remains. There's these two countries, India and Pakistan, geograph geographical compulsions are, are, they weigh in. They have to coexist. And coexistence means talking to, to, to each other, slowly and steadily, without compromising the issue of Kashmir or other issues, the water issue. We will have to talk to each other. Why not building blocks will be the people to people contact, the trade relationship should be, should be done. The people across the border would like. To, to buy each other's goods, whichever is cheaper, they, they would like to buy. Why not have this thing? Let us talk and let the professional diplomats and professionals in the in the trade business talk to each other. Let there be see, uh, easing of tension, and then then only would the would the uh, uh, would a dialogue take place at the political level because political level dialogue will give the will 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 what you say give the direction. I'm just taking one second more. If you look at the national dialogue, the secret dialogue which took place, the the the, uh, the military leadership and the political leadership more or less on the same page. They said that we would like to have better relations with India. Now India has to now respond, has to has to respond in a in a very logical manner, in a realist manner. 
realism realism demands that pakistan india talk to each other raja sahab <clears throat> obviously dialogue holds the key that's the way to move forward but so one important factor that you know we have heard that you know pakistan had given mfn status to india there wasn't much change after that even so considering your own aim and objective is very important and then you negotiate if there is any issue and there are plenty of issues plenty of very important issues but sir having said that there is this government in place which is a coalition of let's say 11 12 13 parties let's assume that the elections are held on time this government has let's say over a year should we expect a little too much from them or we should also keep the reality in mind that one year will not make any differences it uh, will not make any difference as such but when you see pakistan people's party holding the position of uh, uh, the foreign policy the prime minister is from pml and perhaps lana sa becomes the president or whosoever i mean it's a mix and match there could be issues there could be multiple problems as far as decision making is concerned when the cabinet is there you can't have everybody on the same page so it's a reality this is what we have the seen in the past the reality is that all these parties in this present coalition they are on the same page with with india no okay. party in this coalition is opposed to having a dialogue or a good relation with india number one not a single party in this coalition i remember when there was uh, uh, 2002 2003 uh, confrontation between two militaries an eyeball to eyeball yes. and brigadier haris sahab knows more than i know about these issues at that time molana fadlur rahman visited india and uh, in november and in the aftermath of his visit uh, atal bihari vajpayee the prime minister of india uh, agreed to attend the sark summit in 2004 now you have seen ppp you were talking about trade it was during the previous government of what Pakistan. you are saying that uh, molana sahab convinced bihari sahab <laughs> that's what he went for you know <laughs> that's what he was there the de escalation took place the two armies retreated mm. and went back to the peace times and that's why you know atal bihari vajpayee came to pakistan you know these are very delicate diplomatic initiatives that the leadership takes you know uh, now talking to trade the people's party in fact after a very long time after if i can say after 1965 the people's party converted the mode of pak india trade previously it was on the basis of the uh, positive list i But remember they yeah. converted to negative list yeah, that you identify a list of negative items which cannot be traded rest of all the item they can be traded off okay and now the third you know government was of pmln and pmln tried its best to normalize that's why what i told you prime minister narendra modi went to lahore in one december law declaration yes no 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 i'm talking of about the wedding modi lahore declaration was signed by by bihari vajpayee you talk about modi's visit modi. when uh, it was february yeah it was february mm. but modi ji came in december on 25th when there was birthday of mian nawaz ji so all these parties or the parties in this alliance they are they have been you know in the past uh, they have been in the favor of a dialogue with with india so in the coalition there will be no problem the problem is in the context of india pakistan that you always take one step ahead and then something happen then you come back back to, to square one back to square one this has been the problem whenever there was dialogue between the two countries one more thing i want to have you said that if pakistan gives concession to india normalizing uh, trade and we have, communication we have done that many times it's not a concession if something cheaper comes here for the people of pakistan why not why not medicine secondly, for example secondly yeah? you remember when it is people to people contacts more pakistanis have to visit india because they have their family members back in india so right. maximum number of pakistanis from karachi hyderabad sakhar and other parts of pakistan their families that the people to people contact exactly. is very important as well but thank you very much prasa for your presence brigadier thank you so much sir
for your participation and uh, MJ Kiani sir it was a pleasure having you in the show sir thank you so much all for right. your presence right. as well and that's all we have for this up i'll see you again at 8:05 pm till then you take good care khuda hafiz